Hello students, welcome to RK Academy. In the last session we had discussed about the digestive system uh, the, of the fundamental topics. The particular fundamental topics are heterotropic nutrition as well as heterotropic nutrition. You all got, the, got an idea about the heterotropic nutrition and autotropic nutrition. And can we revise once? Can we revise once? Yes. Yes, autotropic nutrition means those organisms which prepare the food by themselves. Uh, th that means uh, those organisms which doesn't depend on any other organism for their survival. Such type of nutrition is called as autotropic nutrition. Whereas come to the heterotropic nutrition, those organisms which depends on the other organisms for the survival of themselves and also depends on the other organisms for the food and some other uh, necessities. Such type of nutrition is called as heterotropic nutrition. So we all know and we got an idea about the autotropic nutrition as well as heterotropic nutrition. Now move on to the heterotropic nutrition and human being is the best example for the heterotropic nutrition. So in the human beings we will discuss about the digestive system, whatever the digestive system is there with the need to label diagrams. And in this session we will go through the mouth of the human digestive system. Because as we discussed in the last session what is digestion and the fundamental concepts of that particular topic. Now, I am going to explain you about the mouth. Yes, sir. In the human beings, you can observe this structure of the mouth. And assume that this is a mouth and this is the nose and this is the mouth of a person. Fine. So, and this is considered as the mouth of the person. And the cavity inside the mouth is called as oral cavity or the buccal cavity. What is that? Oral cavity or the buccal cavity. So the cavity present inside the mouth is called as oral cavity or oral cavity or buccal cavity. And you all know that the human digestion starts from the mouth of a body, mouth of a body, and uh, it starts with the mouth, uh, mouth and it uh, uh, ends with the anus of a body. So we will discuss the part, uh, whatever the parts are there in the human digestive system. And what is the name of the first part that is in, that involved in the human digestion is that is mouth. And hence the mouth is the first organ of the digestive system and the cavity that is present inside the mouth is called as oral cavity or the buccal cavity. Oral cavity or the buccal cavity and it could be called as buccal cavity not buccal cavity. Fine. And it is separated by the, the mouth is the oral cavity is separated by the hard palate. What is that? The mouth is separated by the hard palate and this is called as the mouth is separated with a bony soft bony plate and this is called as palate. What is that? Palate and it separates the oral cavity from the it separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity. What is that? Nasal cavity and you all know that the air we breathe through our nose and passes through the nasal cavity and passes through the nasal cavity and which is separated by the palate which is separated by the palate and hence the palate separates the nasal cavity as well as the oral cavity or the buccal cavity. So they may ask you in the examination hall what is the name of the soft bone that separates the buccal cavity or oral cavity from the nasal cavity and you should answer about the nasal cavity and buccal cavity that gets separated by a bone is called as palate. What is this? Palate. Fine. And this particular nasal cavity and oral cavity opens at common passes at a common place is called as pharynx. What is that? Pharynx. Nasal cavity and oral cavity opens at a common path or common passes is called as pharynx. What is that? Pharynx. And uh, I am going to draw the diagram again and this is the mouth and this is the nasal cavity and these both opens at a common junction or common place and it is called as and it is called as pharynx. What is that? Pharynx. And come to the next one. What is the parts? So what are the what were the parts that are present inside the mouth? And uh, hardly the parts uh, inside the mouth is the salivary glands and the tongue as well as the tooth is there in, inside the mouth. What is that? Tooth is also there. 
So, we will discuss clearly about the tooth and the salivary glands as well as the mouth, as well as the tongue. Fine? Yes. Uh, just look it out. Uh, this is the tongue and this is the tongue we are going to discuss here. Yes. Human tongue is about 10 centimeters in length. How many centimeters in length? 10 centimeters in the length of the human tongue is about 10 centimeters and it is a muscular organ and it is a and it is a muscular organ and it is useful for the tasting of the food materials. What is that? Tasting of the food materials and also the tongue is having the capability to taste about 10,000 such that it says that there are it, the particular tongue is there no that tongue can taste 10,000 taste more than the 10,000 taste and the taste of a food can be determined with the help of the taste words what is that taste words this particular taste words are present in the surface in the surface of a mouth and these can basically identify the taste about 10,000 and such type of taste words are nothing but a papillae. What is that? Papillae. These are also called as papillae. What is that? Papillae. You know that? You know what? Uh, it also, it also tastes some other tastes and the, some unique tastes are there. For instance, if you observe the diagram of the tongue, if you observe the diagram of the tongue and this is the this is the structure of the tongue and you may observe you may observe the taste words are there uh, on the surface of the mouth what is that taste words are there on the surface of the mouth and here it also tastes some special tastes it also senses some special tastes are there and also there are some spots are there in the tongue and those particular area can identify a specific taste and let me ask you one question if I gave you one chocolate and where did you keep in your mouth you keep in your tongue and yes you are going to keep the particular chocolate in the center part of the tongue so that it lifts up the particular tongue lifts up the chocolate and it uh, it ruptures with the palate so that the whatever the chemicals and whatever the liquid portion are there in the particular food that enters into the taste words and those carry the particular information to the brain and such that the brain can give an idea and brain can determine the taste of the food so that you can easily understand that i am going to say you very clearly that the taste words are there in the tongue can taste the food and by sending the particular chemical substance into the brain and so that the brain can determine the taste and sense the same impulse to the tongue so that the we, we so that we feel the particular taste of the food okay and here i'm going to say that if i give you one chocolate means you will uh, you will keep that particular chocolate on the center part of the tongue center part of the tongue see this center part of the tongue and if i give you the salt if i give you the salt to taste means you will keep here for the taste of the salt and if i give you a bitter gourd so there you will kept here so the base of the tongue can determine the bitter taste and the center portion of the tongue can determine the sweet and the tip of the tongue determines the salt of the food material and what about the sore and this part indicates the sore of the food material soreness of the food materials and the sore can be seen in the citrus fruits you know citrus fruits so for instance if we have an example that is lemon and this tip of the tongue indicates the salty nature what is that salty taste and the central portion of the tongue indicates the sweetness of the food material and the base of the tongue indicates the bitter of the food material and hence i'm going to give you one important bit that is the base of the tongue is attached with a muzzle the base of the tongue is attached with a muzzle and that particular muzzle is called as frenulum what is that frenulum and this is 
frenulum the base of the tongue is attached with the frenulum it is a muscular thing and it uh, attaches with the tongue so that the tongue get a uh, hold at the particular portion with the help of a muscle that is called as frenulum and let me write again have a look on this frenulum what's this frenulum and hence this is all about the tongue and also we are go we are ne moving to the next part that is and that is the salivary glands what is that salivary glands yes what is the function of the salivary glands can you give me the answer on the comment box yes here salivary glands are there in our mouth and uh, you know what the basic digestion will take place in the mouth only mouth also the basic digestion you know what uh, if you take uh, rice means if you take rice as food means there there carbohydrate digestion can be seen carbohydrate digestion can be seen in the mouth with the help of with the help of salivary glands as I told you in the last video, digestion means the breakdown of the complex food molecules into the simplest food molecules in the presence of glands and some other enzymes is called as digestion. Already I told you. So here I kept an enzyme, I kept a gland that is called as salivary gland. What is that? Salivary gland. And this particular salivary gland releases saliva. What is that? It secretes saliva and it thoroughly mixes with the food at where where the food is mixed with the where the food is mixed with the saliva and it could be called as the mixing of the food with the saliva it is called as it is called as bolus what is that bolus just remember this what they may ask you what is bolus bolus is the composition of the saliva and it is combined with the food and that that particular food churn food and uh, uh, when uh, when the food uh, it is taken into our mouth and that gets showered by the, the premolars and molars and it gets shown with the and it gets uh, grinded with the help of premolars and molars and uh, such type of food is mixed with the saliva so that a particular food can be seen look like a paste and that particular paste the, which is mixed with the saliva is called as bolus what is this bolus yes come to the salivary glands here there are there are there are three pairs of salivary glands are there what is that there are three pairs of salivary glands are there in our body and the they are first one is parotid what is that parotid and second one is second one is sublingual what is that sublingual and third one is submandibular submandibular see once again sublingual submandibular and uh, parotid parotid sublingual and submandibular and these are the three pairs of the salivary glands that are present inside the mouth and uh, uh, those are present and below the tongue and uh, some are at the back side of the ear, ear and uh, some are present at the jaw area so let me explain you where does the parts are located and here sublingual gland is located just below the tongue where is that just below the tongue and submandibula is located just near to the jaw bones what is that near to the jaw bones and parotid glands are uh, located at the behind of ears what is that behind of the ears you know what uh, except human beings in all herbivores except human except human beings in all herbivores we can see in all herbivores we can see that uh, there are four pairs of salivary glands in all herbivores and you know what a recent update is in the year of 2020 in the year of 2020 scientists from netherland from where scientists from the netherland discovered a new salivary gland that is present below the tongue that is present below the tongue and that is called as tuberia what is that 
tube area. This is what an update we got. Okay. And which year does it discover? In the 2020, Netherlands, the scientists from the Netherlands discovered the new salivary glands that is called as tube area. What is that? Tube area. And move on to the next one. The next one is teeth. What is that? Teeth. See, have a look on this. Uh, this study that is concerned with the teeth, this study that is concerned with the teeth is called as odontology. What is that? Odontology. The study that is concerned with the teeth or tooth is called as odontology. What is that? Odontology. The arrangement of tooth or the arrangement of the teeth inside the mouth is called as inside the mouth is called as dentition. What is that? Dentition. And you know what? The arrangement of the the arrangement of the tooth inside the cavities of the jaw bones inside the inside the cavities of jaw bone is called as thecodont dentition what is that thecodont dentition can you repeat again thecodont dentition and you know in the human beings in the human beings the teeth are arranged by the two times such type of dentition is called as diffeodont dentition what is that diffeodont dentition if the if all teeth are in the same size and the same shape such type of dentition is called as homodont dentition what is that homodont dentition what is that homodont dentition and if the teeth are in the they are not in the same shape and the same structure such type of teeth is called as heterodont dentition what is that heterodont dentition you know that the homodont dentition heterodont dentition and diffeodont dentition and thicodont dentition and also the dentition and also the study fine and if the teeth are formed by many times in an organism if the teeth are formed many times in an organism such type of dentition is called as polyphyodont dentition what is that polyphyodont dentition such type of dentition is called as polyphyodont dentition and uh, can you can you give me the answer how many teeth are there in an organism called as opossum the opossum possesses 50 teeth how many teeth 50 teeth and these were the fundamental uh, topics of the teeth and let's let's have a look on the diagram of the tooth let's have a look on the diagram of the tooth and the types of tooth that we have in our mouth okay okay and and the first one is i uh, just uh, pause this video and uh, check it out the particular slide and write down in your notes and resume again okay see here if you observe the structure of the teeth means basically there are four types of teeth basically there are four types of teeth in our mouth and you may have a look on the structure of the tooth here this is the structure of the tooth this is the structure of the tooth and it is covered by a membrane that is called as enamel what is that enamel see this is enamel and entire the tooth is made up of dentin the tooth is made up of dentin and here this particular enamel is a hardest substance in our body hardest substance in our body what is that enamel and uh, dentin is uh, is a substance which made the entire tooth and this particular tooth is ecto and mesodermal origin. What is that? Ecto and mesodermal origin. 
and here during the development of an embryo these membranes are seen that is ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. So, here the tooth are formed with the help of ectoderm and mesoderm. So, it is called as ectomesodermal in origin. And also there are particular cells that are present inside the tooth is called as amyloblasts. What is that? Amyloblasts. And sometimes they may ask you one question is the tooth is an example of the bone? Is the tooth is an example of a bone although it is made up of calcium and phosphorus. And a few amount of tooth is made up of a few, a few substances there about uh, which is composed with the calcium and phosphorus. But it is not a bone, it is a structure. It is a structure, it is not a bone. So, uh, in the recent times I heard I had this type of question in uh, somewhere I think so it is a group 2. In the group 2 paper I had observed that uh, is tooth is an example of a bone? Not at all is an example, not at all tooth is not an example of the bone. Remember this. Okay. And uh, nails are also not a part of the bone and skeletal system already we had discussed there in the skeletal system fine. And here this particular tooth is divided into three parts and this one is called as crown. What is that? Crown and this is called as neck region. What is that? Neck region and this is called as a root region. What is that? Root region. And this teeth is entirely made with the, uh, it is called with a membrane that is called as enamel and which uh, surrounds the tooth. And uh, it is the hardest substance in our body. Fine, it is the hardest substance in our body. And the tooth is made up of a dentin. And the particular dentin is secreted by the dentoameloblast. What is that? Ameloblast. And the tooth is uh, ectomesodermal in origin. What is that? Ectomesodermal in origin ectomesodermal in origin and here see here this particular tooth uh, is having the different different types and different different shapes in our body and already I told you that if the tooth are in the different shapes and different structure it is called as uh, heterodont dentition and uh, hence I can say that human beings are the best example for the heterodont dentition what is that heterodont dentition and have a look on that particular different types of the tooth okay and just pause this video and take it notes onto your notes take it to the to your notes and come to the next one and the next thing is in the human beings we can see four types of the teeth how many types four types of the teeth and hence i give you one code this is icpm I see PM and this is and this is incisors and this is canines and this is premolars and this is molars. What is that? Molars. This is molars. And here this is incisors, canines, premolars and molars. And I would give you a formula to the to you. And you know what they may ask you in the question what is the dental formula the arrangement of the teeth is called as uh, dentition and they are arranged uh, in an order manner in a particular manner and those can be given and those can be identified by having a formula that is called as dental formula what is that dental formula and in adults in adults we can see there are 32 teeth are there in the child we can see there are 20 only and these can be given in a formula that is 2123 by and 2123 and this can be given by 2102 by not 2120 this is 2102 by 2102 this is the dental formula of the human beings for instance if you check it out the formula uh, these indicates incisors and these in indicates canines, these indicates premolars and these indicates the molars. Fine. So, how many, how many teeth, he, he, here it is the, the particular, the particular numerator, what is that? And the particular fraction is there, you know, and the upper one that is above this particular line or if you take, as if you take an example, for instance, uh, if I take my jamins, I will take the half portion, half portion of the lower jaw. What is that half portion of my lower jaw? 
and in this part I am going to draw this, this is the lower jaw, if I take the half portion of the jaw, these are arranged as follows and here it is there are two incisors here and here it is one canine and two premolars, how many premolars are there? Two and how many molars are there? Come on one, two and three and calculate this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and in one side we have eight teeth and how many teeth are there on the other side? There are also eight and eight plus eight is sixteen. 8 plus 8 is 16, so there are 16 to 30 teeth are there in the lower jaw. Hence, I am going to ask you one, one question, how many teeth are there in the upper portion? There is also 16. So, if you add this, 16 plus 16 equal to 32 teeth are there in the adults. In the same way, the dental formula of children conveys as follows and gives you 20 teeth. Fine? Understood? And yes, come to the next one. And uh, you have already, you know the diagram of the oral cavity and uh, or buccal cavity or nasal cavity. And you all know that where does the common passage that is seen for the nasal cavity and oral cavity? That is pharynx. What is that? That is pharynx. And uh, if you observe this diagram, this is the nasal cavity and this is the oral cavity and get separated with the help of a palate. And what is this? This is called as pharynx. What is this? This is called as pharynx. And whatever the food, you know what? Uh, the salivary glands, the salivary glands secretes an enzyme that is called as salivary amylase. What is that? Salivary amylase. And this salivary amylase is also called as salivary amylase is also called as tyalin. What is that? Tyalin. Tyalin. And this particular tyalin enzyme mixes with the food and helps in the carbohydrate digestion. What is that? Helps in the carbohydrate carbohydrate digestion. Fine. And here there is also another enzyme is there that is called as lysozyme which kills the microorganisms whatever the microorganisms are there in the mouth uh, uh, with the help with the food fine. And here this particular food is passes through the oral cavity through the pharynx and it opens into a, a long uh, wave like uh, nature is there and this long tube is there it is called as esophagus what is this esophagus and I have a look on the particular diagram here it is a uh, it is about the stomach and if you see the diagram if you once observe the diagram this is the nasal cavity and this is the oral cavity and it is operated by the palate and it is called as pharynx and this particular pharynx continues to form a separate pipe like structure or a tube like structure is rare and it is called as it is called as oesophagus what is that oesophagus and this particular oesophagus is made up of this particular oesophagus is made up of serous cells and it is having the it is having the mucus after the deglutition of the food deglutition means swallowed food such type of food is called after the deglutition of the food after the deglutition of the food it passes through the esophagus and reaches to the stomach of a body what stomach of a body and hence i would say there is a mucus is there that uh, uh, that is present on the walls of the esophagus which helps for the lubricating nature and also it passes the food very easily to the stomach region and you know what there is no enzymes and no hormones are there in the esophagus there is no hormones and no enzymes are there in the esophagus region and it is made up of serous cells and it is having the longitudinal muscles and uh, uh, transverse circular muscles and it is made up of this particular esophagus is made up of 
this is made up of longitudinal longitudinal circular muscles you know what peristalsis is a mechanism which is seen at the peristalsis is a mechanism which is seen at the esophagus region what is that peristalsis is a mechanism it is seen at the uh, it is seen at the place of esophagus and what is peristalsis if we deglutted if we swallow the food if we if we swallow the food what of the food we took uh, through our mouth it passes through the pharynx and in the intern into the esophagus and reaches ultimately to the stomach where the food uh, present in the esophagus uh, that particular esophagus moves like wavy nature and such type of movements is called as peristalsis such type of peristalsis is seen at the region of esophagus at the region of esophagus and come to the next one and here this particular uh, whenever the whenever we are uh, uh, when the food is get polluted and when the food gets spoiled there we should we would observe the vomitings where the vomitings takes place at uh, this particular uh, this particular esophagus also shows the reverse uh, peristaltic movements reverse peristaltic movement means the food uh, that uh, that in turn and passes from the stomach to the esophagus and come out through a movement is called as reverse peristalsis what is that reverse peristalsis reverse peristalsis reverse peristalsis and itself indicates a reverse nature fine and come to the next one the next one is stomach that is also present in the human digestive system and here stomach indicates and it also stomach explains the entire digestion of the food fine and uh, we will continue this video by the we will continue this by the next video thank you my dear students